Why model dozens of cables when you could model one? The idea behind this cable generator is to create bundles of messy wires and cords really quickly to add details to scenes that might look just a little too empty. If you want this cable generator but don't want to make it, you can get it for a few bucks on Gumroad. I added a few extra options in that version too. Also the $10 tier on my Patreon has free access to all my Gumroad products, as well as all the project files for my videos and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links are in the description. Here's a quick summary of what we'll cover. We'll start with just a few points connected to each other to control where the cables will be. Then we'll use geometry nodes to add some thickness. We'll make a bunch of instances to control how many cables we want and we'll displace them with a noise texture. I'll show you how to get each cable to displace separately and we'll make a way to pinch the ends of the bundles together. Then we'll go to the shading workspace to give each of our cables a random color. If you've ever been unsatisfied with how long it takes to render scenes on your computer, you you should check out Blender Grid. So Blender Grid is a render farm service specifically made for Blender that allows you to upload your file and see how much it's going to cost to render. They even allow you to change settings like render time and how many samples you want. And when you do this, you'll be able to see the price update in real time. They also have great customer service if you ever need help. If you use my link in the description to sign up, you'll get $20 of free render credit to try it out. And you'll also be supporting my YouTube channel in the process. All right, let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.1 for this one. There are a few reasons why we need to be using the 3.1 alpha. There are just a few nodes that we need that don't exist or are slightly different in 3.0. The way I keep up to date is with this Blender launcher right here. It's free and I'll put a link to it in the description. It just lets you have multiple versions of Blender installed and see them clearly. It also lets you download them here as well as experimental builds and things like that. So yeah, we have this blank scene right here. And to get started, I'm just going to create a line uh, for our cable to start with. So I'll add in a plane with shift A, and then I'll tab into edit mode, make sure you're in vertex select, select all of the vertices, hit M to merge. I'm gonna merge at center. This will just create a single vert right here. And I'm just gonna hit E to extrude that out like this. And maybe I'll uh, extrude it up a little too. Um, and this is all we need to get started. So now that we have this, I'll create a geometry nodes workspace up here. General geometry nodes like that. Okay, so with this selected, I'm just gonna hit new right here and it will add our geometry nodes modifier right there. Also going to hit this snap button so that we're snapping to the grid right here. First thing I'm gonna do is give this a little thickness. So to do that, I'll add in a mesh to curve with shift A and then S and I'll search for mesh to curve, mesh to curve right here. So we need to turn it into a curve and it's kind of silly, but we need to turn it back into a mesh with curve to mesh because it gives us this option right here, profile curve. And with that, I will bring in a circle, a curve circle right here, and you can plug that right in. Um, and you can change that with the radius like this. So I'll change that to like 0 0.02. I also like to change the shading a little. So I'm gonna go up here, select a matte cap. I like this normal one, that's the one I usually use, and cavity, and I'll set that to both right there. So it's a little easier to see now. And also I don't think we need this many vertices. It doesn't need to be this smooth when it's that small. I'll just set this to six to make it a little more low poly. Now what I wanna do is make it so there are a bunch of different cables. So to do that, what I'll start with is a mesh line right here. And what we're gonna do is use all of the vertices from this line and we're going to instance this onto it. So I'll hit Alt, Shift, and left click and we can actually see this line right here. I'll just use a mesh to points so we can see where the points are like that. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, and you can see we can control how many points we have with this. And they're all spaced apart by one meter. Instead of using the offset, I'll change this to end points. And that makes it so the end point is at one meter right here. And when we add more points, it doesn't get longer. It just kind of puts them in the middle instead. So I like to use that. We can get rid of this. I was just using it for visualizing. Then I'll add in an instance on points with shift A, search instance on points. What we're going to do is use the points from this line and we're going to instance our original mesh right here. So I'll use this mesh to curve, plug that into the instance, and then I'll plug this back into the curve to mesh. And we can space them apart with this and we can add more with this count right here. So now what we need to do is uh, distort this a little. So we can do that with a set position node. 
I'll add in a set position and we want to put it right here because I want to distort the lines before they get thickness added. And I'll bring in a noise texture and we can just plug the color directly into the offset like that. You'll see this immediately starts distorting, but it's not distorting the, uh, the actual geometry of these. It's basically distorting all of these points and moving them around, but not moving the individual points of each instance. To do that, we need to realize the instances like this. And now you can see they're a little more random, but we have something very low poly here. Um, so if you want some more detail, what we need to do is subdivide this a little. I'll just turn the detail of this all the way down. I'll set this to something like one for now, or maybe two. And I'll add a subdivide mesh. And you can see the more levels I add, the more detail is shown over here. Um, we can also make this smooth like a subdivision surface. There is a subdivision surface node right here. So if we use this instead, it will smooth it out while it's adding points instead of just adding points without smoothing it. We can actually switch between those with a switch node. So I'll add a switch and I'll plug the geometry into one, the geometry into the other, and then I'll plug the subdivision surface into the true and the subdivide mesh into the false. Now we can use this output to plug into here and we can kind of switch between them with this switch right here. So when this is turned on, it's using this one, and when it's turned off, it's using this one. And if we want these to be the same level, we can just grab an integer node and plug that into both, and we can control it over here. Just be careful turning it up too high, you don't want Blender to crash. So I want to be able to control the strength of this noise, so we can do that with a vector math node. If you're using the color output, you want to use a vector math node. If you're using the factor, it's okay to use a regular math node. Because the color has multiple values, it has an R, G, and a B. The factor just has one value. So we can set this to either multiply or scale, and you can see the scale lets us change the level of distortion. So to get rid of that shifting, what we can do is duplicate this and set it to subtract. And we just want to subtract 0.5 first. Basically what this is doing is changing the midpoint of all of these values to zero instead of 0.5, because all of these values are positive. It goes from uh, zero to one. So this is making it go from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And when we scale it, it scales in both directions, the positive and the negative like that. So now you can see we have all of these wires and it looks like they're slightly different from each other, but that's just because they're in a different location. If we were to put these right on top of each other by changing this value right here to zero, you'll see that they all are distorting the same way. We can actually change that and make it so that each line is using a separate W value right here. Move these back slightly. And I'll bring in a capture attribute node. What you want to do is put this between the instance on points, but before you realize them like that. And what we're going to capture is the instance. So this is one reason why you need to be using 3.1 alpha is because in 3.0, you have this node, but it doesn't give you the option to use instance. So you want to set that to instance. And what we're going to bring in is an index node right here and plug that into the value. So basically what this is doing is counting all of the instances, and we know how many instances there are because that's this count right here, and it's assigning each of them an index. So the first one will be labeled one, the second one will be labeled two, and so on. Um, and now all we have to do is use this attribute and plug it into the W right here, and now each one will have a separate W value, and they'll all be offset by a value of one. And if you want to know for sure that this is actually happening, what you can do is take this attribute output and plug it into the group output over here. Then on the modifiers panel, you can just name this something. I'll just name it instance. And then it will show up in your spreadsheet. So I'm going to turn the subdivisions down all the way for this. And I'll also mute this circle with M. That way we have fewer vertices in here. So I know that each of these lines has three vertices, so every three it should change by one. And you can see that's the case, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. What we can do is put a math node after this and set it to multiply. And if we want, we can change this down to zero to make it not work. So now all of these will be zero. And if we turn it up just slightly, they'll only be off by a tiny bit like that. So we can use this now to decide how close we want the noise textures to be to each other. Uh, per cable. And when we turn this to zero, they'll all be on top of each other. And when we slowly turn this up, 
you can actually see how they're very similar to each other. But if we turn this up all the way to like one, then they look pretty random. So if you want, you can stop right here and this is pretty much done. You can just, you know, use this multiply node as the strength like that. You could also like bring a set material node in here to be able to change the colors of this and all that. But I'm gonna keep going. There are a few other things that I'd like to do with this. One thing I'd like to do is be able to pinch the ends off. For instance, if you wanted a bunch of wires to be feeding into a wall, they would get more narrow when they're going through the wall. So the way we're gonna do that is with a map range node. And what we can do is just pull this multiply over here and plug the map range into the multiply like that. And we can use this to control the strength now. You're just gonna use the two max value like that. And the node we're gonna plug into the value right here is called a spline parameter, I believe. We're gonna use the factor. Uh, so basically what that does is it finds the beginning of the spline and the end and assigns the beginning a value of zero and the end a value of one and all the um, points in between are interpolated. You can see right now this end is being pinched and it's being pinched all the way down to zero. So all of these are meeting. If you don't want it to be scaled down to zero like that, you just want to change this to minimum value. So we could turn this up a little and you can see it will spread apart. This is basically changing the smallest it can get. So I'll change this to like 0.2 or something like that. I want this to pinch both ends. So what we need to do is instead of making go from zero to one, make it go from zero and then in the middle it'll be one and then zero on the other end. So we can do this with some math. I'll bring in a math node. What we're gonna do is multiply this by two. So instead of going from zero to one, it's going from zero to two now. And to see that, we just need to unclamp it like that. And you can see it expanded a little on the end. I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna use a ping pong and set this to one. So now what the ping pong is doing is it's saying whenever it gets to one, just to go back to zero. So it's going from zero, the middle is one, and then back to zero like that. So since this is only going from zero to one in the middle and it's not going above one, we can clamp this again. And when we change the from maximum down, you can see it's kind of changing where it's starting to pinch it like that. Um, if we unclamp it, you'll see it just kind of gets bigger and it just kind of breaks. So you want to make sure that this is clamped like that. Um, the maximum value will still work because it's clamping to this value right here, the two maximum. The from minimum will kind of just go from the opposite direction like that. And if we pass the 0.5, it'll invert like that. What you can do also, if you want to set this to something like 0.1 and you want these to just stay the same dif distance from each other, you can just click and drag downward until you have both of them selected. And then you can drag them both at the same time and they'll stay the same distance apart like that. If you wanted this to like move around, all you'd have to do is put another math node before all these and change it to addition. And that'll let you move it around like that. And I'll reset these to zero and one. One cool thing about the subtract is if we want, we can kind of use this to make it look like a hanging cable. So if we move this in any direction, the ends are being uh, constrained by this map range. So if we set this to zero, the ends won't move at all like that. And all you have to do is move the Z value right here down and it'll look kind of like a hanging cable. But you can see it's kind of pointy and that's because of this linear fall off. So if you want it to not be pointy, we can just bring in a float curve right here and we can change the shape of it. We want it to be kind of a round shape like this, but I think that looks too circular. So usually what I do is set both of these to 0.5 and then I'll just move the Y value up until it just visually looks good to me. And I think that's somewhere around 0.75 like that. So you can add as many points in between as you want and it'll still hang from the beginning and the end. If you wanna be able to adjust the W value of all of these, all you have to do is add a addition node afterward and that will change the W value for all of them. So I think that's a nice option to have. Another thing that's nice about using this line as the, um, the points is you can still change the end point like that. If you wanna make something look more like, instead of a bundle of cables, it can look like a ribbon cable or something. When you do this, I think it looks better to change this multiply value down closer to zero. 
I'll just change it to zero so you can see. So now all of these are using basically the same noise texture. And obviously if you want more cables, all you have to do is change this count right here. So you can have something small like just six cables or you can have something more like a hundred and it'll just be this big bundle like that. Okay, next what I'll do is just make it so that we have a lot of the options that we want over here in the, in the uh, modifiers panel. For that, you just need this group input. So the first thing I'll add is the count. And to change any of these options, you just want to hover over the geometry nodes workspace and hit N and then choose group. And then you can select what you want and change the name and the default value and stuff. I'll change this to something low like 10. And I think count is fine for the name. I'll change the subdivision level so we can get rid of this integer and just plug this directly into both. And I'll change the default to zero. And I want to have the option to smooth it or not. And we can just turn that on and off over here now. You can duplicate the group input over here and just bring it wherever you need to. I like having the end location, name that uh, position offset or something, or location offset. Now we want the strength right here. This is going to be how big the pinch is. Pinch start and pinch end. I want the scale and the detail just in case. I also want this, the noise offset. I'll have one for this multiply right here. Noise similarity and then W. This is basically like a random seed. One for the curve radius, the cable radius, and I will also want one for the material. You can have one for the resolution if you want, but I'm just going to leave mine at six. I don't really plan on changing it. And now you can um, select these and use the arrows to move them to whatever order you want. Now I'm going to create a material for the cables. I'll just name it cables, assign the material over here. Once again, I just did that with a set material node right there. We can change the shading right here. I want to be able to have like a random color per cable. Um, so we can actually do that with this attribute value right here. And once again, that is basically just before the instances are getting realized. It's just counting all of the instances and giving them a number, you know, just one, two, three, four per cable. So we can plug this into this output right there. And I named that instance, I'll just rename that like cable or something like that. You can name it whatever you want. And because I want these to be random and not just go up by one, I can bring in a white noise right here. You can change this to 1D and we can just drop it in right here. And I'll move this to value. You can hold control and left click to move that. And now when we go into the shading workspace, Basically to set this up, you just want to bring in an attribute node right here. And you want this name to be the same as whatever name you put here. So I named it cable. And I believe it is case sensitive, so you want to make sure if there are any if there's anything capitalized over here that you capitalize it there also. And all we have to do is plug the color into the base color right here. And now each cable will have a random value between 0 and 1. And we know this is the case because we can see it in the spreadsheet over here. All of these are gonna look the same uh, until we get to the next cable, 5, 8, 2, and then this must be the next cable, slightly different. Um, none of them are below zero, none of them are above one, because that's just the way that the noise texture works. And when we change this W value right here, it's basically just going to give us a different color. So when we plug it into there, it's just kind of randomizing the color per cable. Back in the shading workspace right here, we can actually use these grayscale values to do quite a bit. So if you wanted these to be rainbow, for instance, what you can do is just bring in a combine HSV, that's hue, saturation, and value. We're going to use this for the hue. When we turn all of these all the way to one, these are going to be very vivid and bright. Uh, and when we change this hue value, it's just going to cycle through all of the colors of the spectrum. And when we plug this into here, it'll just give us random colors like that. You can make this darker or more pale with these options right there. If you want more control, you can use something like a color ramp plug this in here. You can make this blend between two colors. So I'll just have this be like black and orange or something like that. So you can see now we have some that are dark, some that are light, some that are in between. What I like to do is set this to constant. And now when we move this around, some cables will start to turn a different color. This looks a little better when we have more cables. So I'll turn this up really high to like 
a hundred. So you can see we have a big bundle of cables now. Most of them are black, but occasionally we get like an orange one in there. And you can add whatever colors you want. You can add, add a bunch of other stops with the plus button. So if I want some of them to be like blue, we can make it so there are just a few of those also. Obviously, you know, you can change all of the shader options here other than color too, but I'll leave that up to you. All right, so let's see what we can do with these cables now and all of the options that we have. I'm just gonna set up a small room. I'll start with a plane and I'm just gonna bring two of these walls up. I don't like this color, it's a little too much for me. So I'm just gonna add like a checkerboard pattern. And let's just uh, duplicate this a few times and move it around. If you want to snap this to like a wall, you can just change the snap over here to face or edge or something like that. I'll change it to edge and I'll change this from closest to center. So now when we move this around, all you have to do is hold control and it'll snap to edges like that. Go back into edit mode. If you want to be able to see a little better, you might want to go back into shot, uh, solid view and use x-ray like that. So now I can just select this and, you know, put it on an edge like that. And I'll bevel this with control shift B. So if you don't want this to go through the floor like that, all you have to do is change this noise offset. You want to change it on the, the Z value to go up like that. So now not as much of it is going into the floor but because the ends are being pinched, you can see it still meets up at the wall. So now we have this going from wall to wall. We could do the same thing. I'll just duplicate this. I'll connect it up here. We can have some hanging cables. So I'll just delete these right there and I'll connect this one over here a little further. So if we want this to hang now, all we have to do again is change the noise offset like that and it's hanging. I think this might look better with fewer, so I'll change this to like 25 and make the cables thicker. Like that with the cable radius. And they're pretty jagged, so we can turn the subdivisions up. If you have the pinch size set to zero, this will line up just fine. If you change this a little, it will go down a little, like that. So you'll just have to move it up to compensate, like that. I'll duplicate this again, and we'll just make this look a little different. Change this to snap to the face. I'll just kind of uh, spiral this a little bit. So what I'll do is change this to something smaller like 25. I'll turn the noise similarity to zero and I'm going to use the location offset and bring that upward like that. I think the strength is a little too high. I'll set that to zero and just bring it up slightly. It looks kind of like a ribbon cable. We can just bring that down like that. This is the sort of thing we don't really need to pinch the end if we don't want to. We could do this in a different direction too. So instead of going in the Z direction for the location offset, I'll make it go in the Y like that. I'll pinch that at zero and we can change the noise offset so it's kind of bridging. So we could also have something that looks a little more like this. It looks a little more um, organized, I guess, technical. And if you want something really weird, you can animate this W value right here. So to do that, I'll just type in hash and then frame, and this will just match the current frame that you're on. So this is going to go way too fast. Um, all we have to do to slow it down is divide it by something. So I'll divide it by 100, something like that. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can find all of the project files on my Patreon, and you can get this cable generator on Gumroad. If you use my link in the description to sign up for Blender Grid, you'll get $20 of render credit. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.